Yeah, I'm going to begin uh, just by asking about how helpful it was having, because obviously this is the fourth movie into uh, entry into this kind of franchise, mm -hmm. having other films in this series to, to sort of know the tonality of the film and, and of the series and know what's expected of you. I mean, was that quite was that quite helpful sort of when getting involved to know what what the what the Purge series is all about already? <laughs> Yes and no. Yes, because, you know, naturally you want to be able to stay within the world of what you're creating. But at the same time, this was the first film, like the first story, you know, so that we don't have any influence from the other films to depict this film because the world hasn't yet been set. This film sets the world of what we've already seen in the last few films. So, yes, you want to, you know, you want to create it as a part of the franchise in which already exists. But Gerard specifically said this is going to be a different film. You know, this is going to be a specific take on The Purge and this is going to be my vision for the film and we're going to collectively create something magical. And obviously, I mean, it's such a kind of an American franchise, taking a really barbed look at kind of American culture and politics. Mm -hmm. What was it like being what was a sort of effectively a sort of lone Englishman in that in that <laughs> in that setup? It was it was interesting. You kind of like you're that fish out of water. And but at the same time, you get to kind of take a stance where you can analyze and even get into hear the opinions of Americans and how they you know, regard what's happening in terms of all of the political affairs in which are happening. And because you're not directly connected to it, you get an opportunity to really stand back and see what's what's going on. And yeah, you, you but at the same time playing that character, you have to immerse yourself in the world. And for those few months in which we were shooting those that the film, I was an American and I had to get into the mind space of that and my political views on what was happening in order to access and be that character. And I was interviewing uh, Noel Clark and Ashley Walters recently for the, for the TV series Bulletproof, and they mm -hmm. were saying that they feel there's so many more opportunities now at the moment for kind of black British actors than there were, say, when they were looking for roles 15 years ago. Yeah. And you've obviously got the likes of John Boyega and Daniel Kaluuya and then Amal Amin and Malachi Kerbin. If, do you think, even though the industry is still struggling massively with diversity, does it still feel like there, there are more stories to be told at the moment by black filmmakers and more opportunities for actors like yourself? Yeah, most definitely in the, in the US. Like that, but I feel like that's always kind of been the case. And naturally, as the door's been opened by you know, Idris, by um, David, by Jimmy, by John, and, and all these actors can now start coming through, we get more opportunity to be able to showcase that. But the stories have always been there in the US. It's the UK in which I feel like these unrepresented stories are not being told. And there still needs to be a huge kick up, and kick up the arse to be able to, to tell these stories. But yeah, in America, that, that's why we have to go over there and work there, because Otherwise, there's not many stories to tell. Yeah, because I mean, some actors really do feel the need to go to the States, get an LA agent and really kind of pursue their career over there. I mean, is that something mm -hmm. that you, you've given much thought to actually kind of starting, not re, not starting, but kind of restarting a whole new career for yourself in America? Or do you still quite want to stick around here and just sort of take jobs over there when, when called upon? I, I want to do the best of both worlds, essentially just perform and create stories and deliver stories at the highest, the highest level. And so, you know, even in, in pursuing that, yeah, a part of it was that, you know, I felt like there was a ceiling here and I want to be at the highest point of my craft in which is Hollywood, you know, in which is global, international. And so I took those steps in saying to my agent in the UK, I want to go to America and get a manager and get an agent there and get opportunities there. And not to say that I'm going to do that and just stay there and never do anything here because I love the culture. I have my company here, always doing work for the culture and, 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 and delivering those stories. And my aim is to do things in which you, you, you have to do in order to do the things you want to do. And I want to create a film industry here in which we can tell the stories in which are not being told. And of course, I mean, you've done a fair bit of comedy uh, before in your time. That must be quite a pressurising genre. Is it quite nice to, to not do comedy every so often? Because there's this kind of instant, there's, yeah, there's something instant about comedy where people either laugh or they don't. And it's, I guess yeah. there's always that pressure to make people laugh. Yeah, yeah, Is it yeah. quite nice sometimes to go into a project and just be devoid of that pressure, not have to worry about making people laugh for a change. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. Like, it's always nice to have a, a new twist, but at the same time, that pressure of making people laugh is gone. But the pressure of then making people, you know, feel like you are deploying something in which is real and in which it exists in drama is a whole new problem in which you have to do. And so, yes, you can take away the comedy and making you laugh, but now I have to make you believe me in another way in which I don't necessarily have to do in acting, in, in um, comedy, because. I need to make you laugh in comedy and here I need you to buy into my world and to my story. So different problems, one man's trash is another man's treasure and they both create different opportunities. And according to IMDB, which is obviously where I do all my research, yeah. uh, you're in Verses, is that right? That, yes, sir. That is what, that, so it's a kind of set in a UK rap battle scene, like a kind uh -huh. of British eight mile, I guess. How did you fit into that story? Yeah, um, so yeah, Verses is, yeah, it's a UK rap battle film and yeah, it probably will be regarded as a British eight mile because we haven't really had, you know, big rap battle films here and Eight Mile was the, the treasure in which we all know and regard. Um, and yeah, my character in that story is a character called Blaze and um, he's uh, you know, a really good friend of um, 
the character that uh, Connor Swindle plays, which is the lead, and he's a he's a rap battler. I get to you know be a rap battler, not only play the character but also you know deliver those those rap battle bars, and and that was fun, man. It was a real opportunity to immerse myself in something completely different, and that's another project I can't wait for people to see. Brilliant. Thanks so much for your time. Much anytime. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching. Hey, you guys. Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys. Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed. Yeah. Nice. Hey!